Puns are real. Afflictions are real. But nothing compares to God's intervention when the wind of change blows on the life of an individual. Are you ready to be set free through the knowledge of God's undiluted word? Are you ready to build up your most holy faith and be built up by the words of His grace? Join us this Thursday at God's Anointed Servant, Apostle Tunde Akinola of the War Shakers International Christian Center, also known as Liberation Cathedral, located at Ethiopia, Ilero, Imoleolua Community, Bea Abba Yamedi, Ilawe Road, at Doekiti. Brings God's word to you for a life changing experience. The rain of God's word will be falling at 6 45 p.m. every Thursday on Midas Radio 9.5 FM at Doekiti. On a program designed to help change your life and show you the ways of God, thereby empowering you to take your rightful place in the kingdom. So, join us at 6 45 p.m. on Thursday for a divine encounter on the program Wind of Change and You Shall Be Blessed. At War Shakers International Christian Center, we revolutionize your world with the word. Is turning things around. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I want to appreciate you for another opportunity you have given unto us to land at your feet today. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, as we look into your word, speak to us directly in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word have the desired effect upon our lives in Jesus' name. And at the end of today's teaching, Father, let your name and your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome to today's edition of Wind of Change. I am Oluwa Tunde Akeola. And by the grace of God, I'm the senior pastor of the World Shakers International Christian Center at Dwekiti. You are welcome to this powerful edition. And by the grace of God, we are looking at the topic that says uh, secrets of success. Secrets of success. And our Bible passage shall be taken from Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. It goes to us, and I read. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with us wherever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 to 8 and verse 9 says have not i commanded thee be strong and of a good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee with us whoever thou goest amen we are looking at secrets of success permit me to share a few points with you as we progress into this teaching i've realized that the desire for success is a universal desire it is a desire that cuts across all races religions genders cultures and environments that means whether you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are an animist, idol worshiper, everybody wants to succeed in life. Even artists, people that don't have religion, they want to succeed. Whether you are an American, you are a Nigerian, European, everybody wants to succeed in life. There is no man that desires failure. Every man has the desire for success. So it is the desire of every man to be successful in life. Male and female, young and old, student and teacher, everybody wants to succeed. There's nobody that does not want to succeed. In fact, there's a popular saying that failure is an orphan. Nobody wants to <laughs> associate himself with a failure. Nobody likes it when they call him a high failure. So everybody wants to succeed. Now, number two, it is God's plan and program for all his children to be successful in all areas of their lives. When you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 7, it's full of promises that God made for us. Uh, that if we obey Him, we keep His commandments, we'll be the head and not the tail, we bless our going out, our coming in, our baskets will be full. A lot of blessings that God promised us if we obey His commandments. So our God is a God that wants His children to succeed. He wants His children to prosper. Even Psalm 35, verse 27 says that God has delight in the prosperity of His servants. So God wants us to succeed in whatever we do. Whether you're a student, God wants you to succeed. How is God glorified when you have carryover upon carryover? How is God glorified when you have spillover? How is God glorified when you have extra year? So God is not interested in failure. God wants you to succeed. If you're a civil servant, God wants you to succeed. If you're a businessman, God wants you to succeed. If you're a teacher, a nurse, whatever you are doing, God wants you to succeed in it because it will glorify him. That's the truth of the matter. Because when you are a failure, you can't have more to talk. 
Failure is a silencer. Why success is an amplifier? I will take that again. Failure is a silencer. Success is an amplifier. When a man is a failure, you can't even have voice to talk. Nobody will believe you. Well, oh, my friend, go and sit down. That's what they'll tell you. What have you done? What have you achieved that will make us to listen to you? I pray for you. The failure that will silence your voice, it will not come near you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, it is not every man that will achieve success. That's the truth. Even though God wants us to succeed. Even though every mom, everybody wants to succeed. But it is not every man that will achieve success. Why? Because it is not every man that will discover the secrets of success. Because every success that is recorded is a function of a secret that was discovered. So when you don't discover the secret of success, you can't achieve success. Like I said some time ago, I said, you might not know a way to get somewhere. And when you don't know the way to get there, you can't get there. It's as simple as that. It doesn't mean that that place does not exist. You are the one that does not know the way to get there. For example, now I want to go to Lagos and I don't know how to get to Lagos. I will just be stranded in Adwick here. And it doesn't change the fact that Lagos exists. I'm the one that doesn't know how to get there. So success is real. Success is achievable, but if you don't know how to achieve it, it will be elusive to you. And it doesn't mean that God does not want you to succeed. So now, what is success? Let's know that one first before we go on. Success is the achievement of one's aim or set goals. Success is the achievement of one's aim or set goals. Then success is the accomplishment of God's purpose for one's life. That's the broader definition, the biblical definition of success. When God's purpose for your life is achieved, then you have succeeded. Now, there are two types of success. Number one, there is what I call bad success. Number two, there is what I call good success. Now, what do I mean by that? A bad success is the success a man achieves that does not glorify God. A bad success is the success a man achieves that puts his eternity at risk. For example, now, you know, I said success is the achievement of one's goal. Let's assume that, uh, let's assume that a single lady sees a married man that he li- she likes and she begins to make moves to enter his house and maybe drive the real wife out. Let's say, assume that she, so say, she, maybe she was able to seduce the man and she succeeded. And she drove out the wife at home and she entered as the wife. Now, in the eyes of the world, that's success because she had a goal. What was that goal? To enter that man's house, drive his wife out. And she succeeded. That's success. But that's a bad success because that's not something to emulate. Amen. So any success that cannot be emulated is a bad success. Any success that does not glorify God is a bad success. Any success that makes you a candidate of hell. Is a bad success. But what of good success? Good success is the success that glorifies God, is the success that makes eternity to be sure for you, and it's a success that can be emulated or imitated. That's a good success. Now let's look at secrets of success so that we know where we're going. Number one secret is positive thinking. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says that guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 23, 7 also says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the journey to success is a journey that begins in the mind. The success you can't achieve in your mind is a success you can't achieve in life. That's the truth. Because your mind is the CPU of your life. Your mind is the central processing unit of your life. This is why you must be mindful of what is going on there. Your thinking determines your action, and your action will determine your results. So big things happen to those who think big. So anything that a man does starts in his mind. So what are you thinking? You can't be thinking of failure and you expect to succeed in life. No, you can't be thinking negatively all the time and you expect your life to have a positive result. No, it doesn't work that way. So pay attention to the thoughts that you allow into your mind because they influence the direction of your life. Then number two, set clear goals. Set goals that are very clear. A goal is a dream with a deadline. And to live without goals is to end up dying like a goat. To live your life without goals is to end up dying like a goat. So a life without goals is like a football match without a goal post. Football lovers that are listening to me, try to imagine a football match where the players are just kicking the ball around. No goal post to, to, you know, to, to pursue. What makes a football match interesting? The attempt of each team to score uh, in the goal post of the other team. That's what makes it interesting. All the strikers, defenders, midfielders, all their efforts, they are judged towards one thing, to put the ball in the net of the other team. And that's what makes football interesting. Now, imagine a football match where there's no goal post. They, <laughs> both teams don't have any goal post. They are just kicking the ball around. How would that football match be? Boring, dry, dull, uninteresting. That's how the lives of so many people are, when they have no goals that they are pursuing. So a life without a goal is like a football match where there's no goal post. May our lives not be like that in the name of Jesus. Then number three, take relevant actions. It's not enough to think positively. It's not enough to set clear goals. You must take relevant actions. James chapter 2 verse 17 says, Faith without works is dead. <laughs> Faith without works is dead. So plans that are not backed by concrete action is a mere illusion. No matter how big your plans are, no matter how wonderful your plans are, no matter how beautiful those plans are, if you are not backing them with concrete action, you are just daydreaming. That's the truth of the matter. So you need action. It is whatever you do that God will bless, not whatever you plan. 
10,000 good intentions is not as powerful as one good action. I will repeat that. 10,000 good intentions, they are not as powerful as one good action. So action makes the difference, not intention. You may have the best of intentions, but if those intentions are not converted into actions, it will not make any difference in your life. So take relevant actions. Then number four, never stop learning. Never stop learning. Upgrade. Knowledge is power. We live in a world now where knowledge is evolving. Many years ago now, they taught us in secondary school. In my own days, they said we had nine planets in the solar system. But presently now, as I'm learning, we don't have nine planets again. Pluto has been <laughs> deplanetized. They say Pluto is a dwarf planet. So we now have eight planets. Can you see that knowledge is evolving? Many, many years ago, they told us about uh, the classes of uh, is it food now, uh, carbohydrates, whatever. They have added some to it now. Where the, we were not taught in the secondary school. So many, many knowledge is evolving. So don't stay out of date. To be, to be, to, to, for when you refuse to upgrade yourself, you'll be downgraded. That's how life is. So knowledge is power. Your learning determines your earning. That's the truth of the matter. And one thing about knowledge that I've noticed, you will notice the last four letters in the word knowledge. E-D-G-E. Knowledge. So what does that mean? That means knowledge gives you an edge. What you know gives you an edge over those who don't know it. So it's as simple as that. Knowledge is the difference between wealth and poverty. Knowledge is the difference between success and failure. That means there is something that the rich man knows that the poor man does not know. That's the truth. There is something that the uh, successful man knows that the failure does not know. So that shows the importance of learning. Get knowledge. And number five, persistence and diligence. I won't talk too much about that. But you know that if you want to succeed, you must be persistent and you must be diligent. You can't be lazy. You can't be giving up too easily and you expect to succeed. It doesn't work that way. You keep doing it and doing it until you get there. Then number six, innovativeness. You must be innovative. You, know, you must be innovative. Sorry, I'll take that again. You must be innovative. Do things differently. You can't be doing things the same way all the time and be expected to get a different result. It doesn't work that way. Then you, you can't be doing things the way others are doing it and you expect to stand out from them. No, it doesn't work that way. Look for a way to do your own differently. Because people have been doing this particular way. Do something differently from the way others have been doing it and see whether you will not get results. So be innovative. Be creative. I pray God will help us. And lastly, time management. You must know how to manage time. Ecclesiastes 31, unto everything there is a season and a time appointed to every purpose under heaven. So the outcome of your life is determined by what to do with your time. Time is the currency of life that God has put in the hand of every man equally. Every man has 24 hours. What are you doing with your 24 hours? American man has 24 hours. Nigerian man has 24 hours. Chinese man has 24 hours. Yoruba man has 24 hours. Aousa man has 24 hours. Every man has 24 hours. What are you doing with your own 24 hours? If you are wasting time, you are wasting your life. If you are investing time, you are investing something good in your life. So time can be wasted, time can be managed, time can be invested wisely. So what, are you investing your time or you are just wasting time or you are just whiling away time? Take note of this. I pray God will help us to have a better understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. And one last key of success is when you meet with Jesus, who is the God of success himself, connect with him and your success is guaranteed. So if you want to give your life to Jesus as you are listening to me, just pray this prayer very simple. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I am a sinner and I cannot help myself. Forgive my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood. Cancel my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. Today, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now I am born again. Amen. If I have prayed that prayer with all your heart, congratulations. You are now a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. Uh, I will just advise you, look for a Bible-believing church that is close to you. Join them for prayers and fellowship and your life will never be the same again. And if you don't mind, you can join us at our own church, Watch Shakers International Christian Center, a.k.a. Liberation Cathedral. We are located at uh, Imolelua Community, it's off in Ulero, via Abayamedi, off Ilawe Road. Uh, our services are on Sundays. We meet by 9 a.m. on Sundays for Sunday service. And on Fridays, our prayer meeting, third solution service, 4.30 to 6.30 every Friday. And every last Friday of the month is our video tag fire and prophecy at 9 p.m. every Friday. And uh, you can join us for all these programs and your life will never be the same again. And um, if you want to call us for prayers and counseling, you want to tell us how this program has blessed you, reach us on 080-6969-9100. 080 Till I come your way again, I remain Oluwa today. I can Allah. God bless you. Keep winning.